Hello friends, today's special lecture is on the National Unity Day. It is the lecture, lecture is in the series of the symbolic expression and we have with us Manisha Sharma as, as, as an interpreter. And in this context, I would like to suggest you that how we talked about the National Unity Day which is being celebrated on 31st of October you know, to celebrate the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel and in the earlier lecture we talked about the contribution of Patel not only to the national movement uh, but at the same time the integration of the states as well. And uh, in recognition of the kind of contribution which was made by Sardar Vallabhai Patel in terms of uniting uh, the country uh, in terms of integrating the various states of India. We find that this day has been celebrated since 2014 and even a pledge is being taken by the citizens of uh, the country to in a way uh, contribute to the unity of the country in their own way. So when we see how Sardar Patel played an important role in terms of the integration of the various princely states through the kind of pragmatic approach which was followed by him and at the same time the kind of uh, the kind of practicality which was employed by him in terms of bringing together so many uh, princely states in terms of acceding to India. In terms of uh, references, one can see article by Saurav Ratnu, Sardar Patel, a hero for all ages and Sardar Patel, uh, builder of aspirational India, book edited by Sintripathi and Saket Bihari. Then article by Sunil Shukla and Amit Kumar Devedi, Sardar Patel, an architect of unified India. Subhash C. Kashyap, Sardar Patel, Constituent Assembly and Framing of Constitution, another article in the same book and Feroz Rangunwala's 75 years of Indian cinema. So we find that how the Rashtriya Ekta Divas or National Unity Day which is celebrated being uh, today and how it marks the birth anniversary of Patel. And uh, we also have seen that how the role of Patel as the first uh, Deputy Prime Minister of India and the Home Minister as well and uh, the kind of contribution which he uh, played in the integration of uh, the various states which uh, Patel did. And uh, we also realize that uh, he in a way the way he reorganized the Congress Parliamentary Board as its chairman and helped the party accept the cabinet mission plan and ultimately form the interim government in 1946. And after independence as the Deputy Prime Minister under Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Patel managed the Department of Home, States, then Information and Broadcasting. So he not only played an important role in terms of managing the various departments of the government but also as an active role as the Chairman of the Committee for the Fundamental Rights, Minorities and uh, uh, provincial constitution as well. So we find that he was instrumental in co incorporating provisions like the right to private property, privy purses for the princes and the constitutional guarantees for the civil services in the constitution of India. And as a member of the part, uh, partition committee, he helped uh, in the allocation of the liabilities and the dividends between India and Pakistan. So we find that uh, he was instrumental in incorporating a number of provisions in the constitution of India. For example, the privy purses for princes which uh, definitely in a way some kind of a soothing, uh, 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 some balm for uh, the princes that uh, when they will accede to the Indian Union, uh, they will be provided some kind of a monetary uh, support by the government of India. And we see how the geographical, political and the economic unification of India which remained a dream for centuries. Uh, was consummated by the policy of integration which was spearheaded by Patel after the independence of India. And uh, he felt very proud in laying the foundations of a true secular democratic state where everybody had an equal chance. So the whole nation in a way remembers with deep gratitude how Sardar Patel rid us of the scores of the separate communal electorates and the religious uh, religion based reservations and the quotas when he in a way argued against such kind of things which were being discussed in the constituent assembly debates. And we have also found that his negotiating skills and his precision and firmness all of them they contributed uh, or some kind of a brought about an administrative efficiency 
which in a way helped in the integration of the most of the princely states into the Indian Union. And many of many of the times we see that some of the states uh, they were not ready to in a way accede to India. So, how he dealt with each of them in the different manner and without any bloodshed he was able to achieve so much for, from the point of view of the unity of India. So, when we see his insight, his wisdom, his diplomacy, uh, all of the all of that uh, when he was handling this particular department regarding the integration uh, of the states and many of the monarchs uh, or the kings they acceded uh, to Indian Republic at that point of time. And uh, we could also even compare him to the uh, in a way uh, see or rather uh, he was an example for the corporate leaders of the 21st century in terms of his negotiation skills that how he was ready to explore all the possible options to ensure a win-win situation. So, he was uh, not only a participant in the national movement, but also uh, some, uh, some kind of an example for the corporate leaders for his negotiating skills, uh, which were reflected or rather became more manifest uh, while the integration of the princely states uh, to India. Some of the scholars like Narhari D. Parekh, uh, they have argued that Sardar Patel was well aware of the significance of education for the youth of India and a long battle is registered in history between Patel and uh, Pratt for ensuring education for the youth of country. So, how Patel was very well aware of the kind of relevance which the education had uh, from the point of view of its propagation and uh, he did not want that this kind of an education should remain in the clutches of British control and influence. And uh, how under the leadership of Patel we find that the majority of councillors they decided to end the control of the government by refusing their grants. And uh, from this point of view he was a visionary and aware of the role of education in leading India towards self-sufficiency. And uh, so, it was in a way some kind of a great step that contributed towards an India which could turn uh, entrepreneurial uh, in future with some kind of momentum in that context. And we also find that how success uh, uh, came after a long fight with Pratt and Patel organized the People's Education Board which became the foundation of 43 schools including 13 uh, for the girls. So, Patel was very well aware at that point of time that how uh, the education could be some kind of a building block for the nation and how the idea of uh, nation building was not only uh, after the independence of India, but even before that, that how the factors like education, health, etc., they, they will be very helpful in terms of uh, creating that kind of an atmosphere or situation in the country, which leads to uh, the final unification of the country in that sense. And uh, we find that in uh, the kind of uh, education work, which was initiated by him, that schools, they had professionally qualified teachers and how he raised funds for these school uh, through the public subscriptions as well. So, we find that uh, he had uh, a varied kind of a uh, thinking and in, in his varied kind of thinking all positive contribution was made uh, by him in uh, for the for the India and his great accomplishment also came in the form of his another contribution uh, to the milk farmers at that point of time which uh, provided us the biggest cooperative to the world. In the 1940s we see that the condition of farmers was not favorable whether they were the agrarian farmers or the milk farmers and milk farmers they were getting very less returns and even sold their produce of milk at very low prices or throwaway prices. And uh, the majority of the profits they were being enjoyed by the milk or by the middlemen and the contractors and how in 1945 the government of Bombay they started a scheme called the Bombay Milk Scheme. For this the milk had to be transported 427 kilometers from Anand. Uh, Gujarat to Bombay. So, Patel realized that uh, uh, in a way transporting uh, the milk from this particular area to another, it also needed some kind of investment in the transport and which in a way also raised uh, uh, the price of the milk that way. And uh, another thing which was also important was that way, when this milk was to be sent, it was to be pasteurized in Anand. And for the continuation of this kind of a supply, the government of Bombay entered into an agreement with Paulson Limited, which was a company 
uh, which was interested uh, uh, with this kind of a task and this arrangement was profitable for everyone except the farmers. So, farmers uh, discontent got escalated when they were not getting the kind of dues which uh, definitely uh, uh, were to be given to them and one of uh, one of the leaders called Tribhuvan Das Kishibhai Patel, he visited Sardar Patel and asked for the solution. Patel think, thought in terms of the long term future of the milk farmers and suggested that uh, Tribhuvan Das to remove the Paulson Limited. And Sardar Patel told the farmers that the dairy should belong to you, rather, to the farmers rather than the contractors or the Paulson Limited. So, this kind of an idea was an idea which was thinking on the lines of the cooperative. And finally, when this kind of a cooperative was established in Anand, it was uh, the kind of ideas which were being given by Sardar Patel at that point of time that how farmers they could ensure uh, profits by in a way coming together in a cooperative movement. And uh, Patel also told them that they could have some kind of a losses uh, if they would engage themselves in Satyagraha. And at the same time, he also assured farmers of his support. Uh, if they were ready to bear the consequences, Sardar expressed that my only desire is that India should be a good producer. And uh, we find that how uh, Patel sent his deputy Moraji Bhai Desai to Kaira district to organize the milk uh, cooperation. And how uh, Tribhuvan Das Patel worked under the guidance of Sardar Patel and formed a union. And they finally thought that uh, every village uh, would have a cooperative society to collect milk from all the farmers and the milk societies would be federated into a union and the farmers will put their demand for the cooperative society in front of the government, but the government refused uh, their proposal. And we find that how the farmers, they were in a way determined and as per the guidance of Patel, they refused to sell milk to any milk contractor. This called for a milk strike in Gujarat. And how because of this no milk reached Bombay and as a result Bombay milk scheme started to collapse at that point of time. So, we find that after a fight of 15 days British government had to accept the farmers uh, request and how Tribhuvan Das Patel he took constant guidance from Ballabhai Patel and worked for the setting up of the union. So, we find that the various kind of challenges they did not stop with this and many farmers joined the cooperative because of which supply of milk was much more than the demand. And this also created another kind of a problem and how the Bombay milk scheme could not absorb this excess quantity of milk again the farmers they had to sell the excess milk at throwaway prices. So, Vallabhai Patel uh, provided some kind of a solution to this uh, process that how to uh, in a way process the excess milk by setting up a plant and this gave birth to Amul. Later, uh, Vargas Kurian joined Amul and further revolutionized the milk farming in India. So, apart from this idea of milk cooperative, apart from uh, the uh, way he paid 4000 rupees to the Remington company, so that they make a typewriter uh, in vernacular in Gujarati, so that the locals they can work in their own language. We also find that the, the Patel laid the foundations of an independent uh, integrated India, wherein the regional loyalties they were being overshadowed by a desire to build a strong and a united nation. And his uh, tireless efforts they fructified when most of the rulers they agreed uh, uh, to, ag to in a way join India. And uh, uh, the kind of efforts which were made by Patel during this time. Uh, when some kind of torrential monsoons rains, they were also there and the skies, they were also very turbulent in nature. But uh, Patel was seriously engaged uh, during these months from June, July and August of 1947. And he was flying in Mysore, Dakota, VTAX, uh, second world war uh, workhorse of air owned by Maharaja of Mysore. And uh, he was in charge of the integration of the a princely states of India with yet to be formed republic. So, it was some sort of a complex and unviable job as uh, princes were smelling an opportunity of being sovereign again. But uh, Patel was tireless in his efforts and he was uh, flying in those times uh, visiting various kinds of state during those uh, turbulent months and uh, in a way he was a man who uh, once fought for the rights of his 
uh, classmates when he, they, they were being taken away from him. He was a man who always in a way put his brother's ambition before his own in one of the instances uh, when there was uh, some kind of a support which he could have given to his brother and which he provided as well. So, we find that uh, the kind of upliftment of uh, the country which could uh, take place because of the efforts of uh, Sardar Patel where he gave up the prospects of amassing a great material fortune. Uh, where he also uh, in a way uh, uh, turned away from a lucrative uh, uh, practice where he was involved as a lawyer. So, we realized that it was his uh, moment of reckoning and uh, the destiny of the karma uh, which had given him a unique opportunity to literally draw a map of India uh, through his negotiation powers and the way he used the social meetings and the unofficial surroundings to engage most of the monarchs how he invited them to the lunch and tea at his home in Delhi. And all, at all these meetings Patel explained that there was no inherent conflict between the Congress uh, and the princely order as well. So, we find that how he in a way invoked the patriotism of the princes, he also reminded them of the possibility of anarchy in an event where if they refused to join the Indian state. And he always try, was trying to convince them to join India and he also introduced the concept of the pre vipers as I told you a payment which, which was to be made to the royal families for their agreement uh, to merge with India. And uh, we also see that how Patel was also in a way connected uh, with the film world that how the first reference to Patel in relation to the film world can be noted when the makers of a film called Brandy Chee Botley or brandy key bottle which was made in 1939 by master Vinayak and how he asked Patel to support their troubled film project uh, which was based on a campaign for prohibition of liquor. And uh, we find that Patel was gracious enough and he recorded a speech for the film condemning the evils of drinking liquor and supporting the cause of prohibition. This speech became the opening scene of the film. So, we find that how from the Bombay port. Patel also helped in securing release of a smuggled film print on Subhash Chandra Bose and the Azad Hind Forge which was INA. And uh, this uh, film print was secretly screened for the Congress leaders in Regal Theatre in Connaught Place, uh, New Delhi. So, we find that the kind of uh, initiative which was taken by Patel as a producer and the help which was uh, given by the Indian Motion Pictures Producers Association IMPA. A documentary titled Netaji Subhash uh, uh, in 1947 which was based on the life of Netaji Subhash was produced which also included smuggled footage. So, we also have to uh, realize that though he had some kind of a differences uh, when uh, Subhash Chandra Bose was the president of the Congress and uh, but at the same time uh, Patel was gracious and large hearted enough uh, to in a way uh, accept. Uh, the contribution of Netaji and INA and he made all the efforts that the contribution of Netaji and INA uh, does not remain uh, unrecognized in some way and it is also being also recognized by uh, the film fraternity as well. And uh, we also find that in 1940 Patel inaugurated a film called Achhut directed by Chandulal Shah and in his speech he referred to the vital importance of cinema in the life of a nation and stressed the necessity of using the means potentialities of film for the welfare of the country. So, in a way he was also realizing that how cinema can play an important role in the welfare uh, of the country and some of the scholars like Ramchandra Guha they have also realized that or in a way pointed out that how Patel efforts they paid off and also we have seen that uh, various uh, um, uh, various princes uh, all of them they in a way surrendered the control of the thousands of the villages and jagirs, palaces and institutes, cash balances which were amounting to crores and the railway system of about 12,000 miles to the Indian government without receiving any compensation. So, Ramchandra Goa has pointed that out and we also have seen that how in June 1947 with the transfer of power uh, looming on the horizon in Maharaja Hanuman Singh. He ascended the throne of Jodhpur and began faltering in the commitment of his predecessor Maharaja Omesh Singh which, had made, which he had made with Sardar Patel about uh, joining India. 
So, uh, Patel came to know about this that he was faltering in his promise and uh, he wanted to join uh, Pakistan and how Muhammad Ali Jinnah had uh, given him some kind of a signed blank sheet of paper to list all his demands and uh, he can in a way join Pakistan as well. And pa Patel was in a way sensible or in a way pragmatic to this kind of a situation and he flew down to Jodhpur in his Dakota and met Hanwant Singh and assured him that he would be allowed to import arms that Jodhpur would be connected by rail and that it will be India that would supply grain to Jodhpur state in times of famine. And he was using both the policies of carrot and the stick and we find that he also warned him uh, in a way that when it was being pointed out that the accession of a predominantly Hindu state to Pakistan would violate the basic tenet of two nation theory and was very likely to cause communal violence in the state. So, in a way the blank check which was given by Jinnah was quickly negated and Jodhpur also acceded to India. We also have seen that uh, how Patel he flown around 1 lakh miles in that tiny Dakota, Dakota and by the time he managed to persuade all the 565 princely states and how these princely, princely states they joined the Indian Republic. And uh, we also have seen that uh, he had this kind of a grace to say that the princes of India had shown rare patriotism and it was uh, this commendable spirit that made uh, achievement of the liberty possible. So, Patel in a way was governed by the goodness of his art and in irrepressible spirit and unwavering moral commitment. And uh, because of this, uh, these kinds of qualities he was able to achieve uh, much more and uh, though he was from very humble origins, but when he uh, came to the Indian political scene, he used all his moral and physical challenges which came in, in his path and his contribution to the national integration uh, in the newly independent India, uh, it earned him the, the kind of title the Iron Man of India. And in 2018, Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi unveiled a 182 meter tall statue of Sardar Patel called the Statue of Unity. And it is the tallest statue in the world and it is located on the banks of Narmada River in Kevadia facing the Sardar Sarovar Dam near the city of Vadodara, Gujarat. And so many tourists they are visiting this particular place uh, because of which now it has got that kind of a tag of a very important tourist destination and it also reminds us of the kind of work which was done by Patel and the statue of unity will continue to remind the future generations of the courage, capability and resolve of Sardar Patel uh, which resulted in the integration of India. So, uh, so many schools and colleges they also uh, organize a number of uh, uh, programs and uh, we have seen that. Uh, unity march or uh, race was also organized at different places today in various schools and colleges and uh, how officials and others they take this pledge to preserve the unity integrity and the security of the nation. So, let us in a way celebrate this day to preserve and maintain the legacy of Sardar Patel. Thank you very much.